In the first lesson, we talked about culture in general and how it influences the way people think and behave. In this lesson, we'll talk more about specific dimensions of culture and why it's important to understand them as a leader in today's globally diverse workplace. As I pointed out earlier, there are many levels of culture. The one that you are born into and experienced growing up and ones that you choose. When we study culture as it affects communication in the workplace, we start by focusing on national cultures or the culture of different countries. This makes a, a very good starting place because when you're leading a team of globally diverse employees, the first thing you learn about them is where they're from or what nationality they identify with. Using this knowledge, you can make some assumptions about their communication styles, habits, and behaviors. But remember, and I'll stress this again, your assumptions serve as a preliminary starting point. You need to continue to learn about the people on your team or in your organization, to observe them, to hold conversations and ask questions, so you're able to see beyond just nationalities to the individuals they are. Geert Hofsted, a Dutch social psychologist, conducted extensive studies of national cultures and how culture influences values in the workplace. In these studies, he identified six cultural dimensions, power distance, individualism versus collectivism, masculinity versus femininity, uncertainty avoidance index, long-term orientation versus short-term normative orientation, indulgence versus restraint. We'll look at each one of these in a little more detail. Number one, power distance. Power distance refers to how people view power. Cultures with low power distance expect that power will be distributed to some degree. Authority is based on respect. Individual initiative is expected. Superiors may be willing to accept blame. Superiors and subordinates are comfortable socializing. Cultures with high power distance have a hierarchical structure with most of the power at the top. Authority is based on status. Individuals follow prescribed guidelines. Blame often goes to subordinates. Superiors and subordinates, subordinates do not socialize. Number two, individualism versus collectivism. Individualism versus collectivism asks if the prevailing self-image is I or we. In a culture that values individualism, the members are primarily self-sufficient, People work for private wealth, competition is common, and equality is valued. In cultures that value collectivism, the members see themselves as part of a group that looks out for one another. They stress group loyalty, wealth is more commonly distributed, cooperation is more important than competition, and hierarchies are accepted over equality. Individualistic cultures include the United States and France. Collectivism cultures include China and Bangladesh, for example. Number three, masculinity versus femininity. Masculinity versus femininity represents a preference in a culture for certain characteristics generally associated with gender. In cultures that tend to value typically masculine characteristics, they focus on priorities such as success, wealth, gender differences, and assertiveness. Cultures that tend to value typically feminine characteristics focus on family, relationships, gender equality, and cooperation. Number four. Uncertainty avoidance. 
Uncertainty avoidance deals with how people react to uncertainty and ambiguity. In cultures with a low tolerance for uncertainty, people avoid risk and are less likely to value new ideas and change. People expect specific guidance, risk is avoided, group norms and traditional solutions are emphasized. In cultures with a high tolerance for uncertainty, people embrace risk and accept new ideas and change. People expect to direct their own work. People readily take initiative. Risk is not avoided and innovation and creativity are emphasized. Number five, long-term versus short-term orientation. Long-term versus short-term orientation involves how a culture views their relationship with the past, present, and future. Cultures that favor long-term orientation tend to hold on to familiar traditions. Cultures that favor short-term orientation tend to let the past go and focus on preparing for the future. And finally, number six, indulgence versus restraint involves how people prefer to experience life in general. These cultures that lean toward indulgence support enjoying life and having fun. The cultures that lean toward restraint often enforce strict social norms. Knowing and understanding Hofstede's six cultural dimensions can help you recognize people's different behaviors and communication styles in the workplace. And with this knowledge, you can distinguish business issues from cultural differences. In the next lesson, we'll look at another important factor related to culture and communication.